Hello, Ruth. Hi, Nicholas. <laughs> so I'm finally glad to be um, here in Yslegon, Accra, in your garden, which I have aptly named Madame Ruth's Garden <laughs> because it seems the most appropriate thing. <laughs> and for those of us who don't know Ruth, this is very, very peaceful, calm setting for you to um, run your empire. <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to say welcome to Revolutionary Daydreams. Uh, for those of you who are watching, we know Revolutionary Daydreams is a platform to help people ignite their creative energy. And why I wanted to speak to you is because you are someone that as an entrepreneur and as a young entrepreneur here in Ghana, I think you're paving the way for um, something that we may not have seen or that's not necessarily exposed um, internationally because we don't see Ruth Batsios on the news every day mm -hmm. and I want to make sure your story and you know gets out there because it's all about inspiring other people so could you just tell us first a little bit about your background your education and you're born here in Ghana and then tell us about uh, Hepsi's uh, couture and the mission and, and all of that you do. Thank you Nicholas, <laughs> it's great to have you and I think you know I consider you an honorary Ghanaian. Thank you. Because every time you're here it just feels like he's back home. <laughs> so welcome again and, and thank you um, for this opportunity and about myself I'm Ruth Botsio. Um I was born in Ghana, raised here I attended secondary school here as well, SOS International College, which is one of the best high schools in Ghana. And um, I think from right, when, right from when I entered SOS, I knew I wanted to study abroad, mm -hmm. but I wasn't quite sure whether it would be England or the U.S. And eventually I decided on the U.S.A. because the liberal arts education appealed to me. And I found myself at Yale, which mm -hmm. is a fantastic school, was a fantastic experience. And I think a lot of what um, I have learned or maybe the way I approach life and see things stems from that culture of service that I discovered at Yale. Mm -hmm. So at Yale I studied political science and African studies, was involved in a whole lot of things, especially to do with Africa, including the African Students Association. And then I moved to England afterwards to study law and I was called to the bar in 2012 in England. And then in 2013, if you remember, <laughs> there was a Yale alumni program in Ghana and you asked me to come and help. Mm -hmm. So I came just to help with that program, but I found myself deciding to move to Ghana. Oh, that was more of a uh, coming back home for you exactly. as well. It was, okay. it was very inadvertent. Okay. It wasn't my intention at all to move home. I always knew I wanted to live in Ghana, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure when the right time would be. So mm -hmm. I was still trying to figure out stuff after law school. And then when I came and helped with that conference, I said, you know what, this is it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I started out in Ghana working with a nonprofit, um, Sponsors for Educational Opportunity, which provides educational opportunities um, and um, career mentorship and internships for young Ghanaians. And then I worked with SEO for about a year, after which I started working with my father in his law practice on a part-time basis, but then also decided to pursue things that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm. And this is where the creativity aspect comes in. And I also realized that a big part of um, me being in Ghana, my reason for wanting to be in Ghana, was to create opportunities for other people. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I could have lived abroad, pursued a career in law, but it's not quite the same sending remittances home as it is um, you know, being here, trying to set up a business, trying to motivate people, inspire mm -hmm. young people, trying to make someone's life better. So. All this for me every day is a mission. It's mm -hmm. a mission to improve the lives of ordinary Ghanaians mm -hmm. around me. And just having spent this time uh, this week in Ghana and being around you, you know, th someone who thought I know s knew certain mm -hmm. things, my, um, you know, my mind was totally, you know, enlightened about s some realities about the day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. that I just thought I knew, but I didn't really know. And to see you um, go through your life, your business, your goals with this focus on actually trying to make a personal impact, mm -hmm. I just want to, I think that I, that I was moved by that because yeah. I can see that. Yeah, and it's not easy to try mm -hmm. and make a personal impact um, on people's lives because imagine if my company had personal of, um, let's say 100 instead of 10. Currently mm -hmm. our staff number is about 10, which is 
a decent size, you mm. know, um, startup by all standards, um, by local standards, I should say. So imagine if I had a, start, a staff of 100, it would be more difficult to have the kind of personal impact that I do now in mm. terms of mentorship, in terms of knowing what's going on in my staff's family, et cetera, families, etc. But I think the greatest take home uh, from all this for me is that I am now familiar with the, the intricacies of what it means to to have people that you call your staff that are not only staff but their family. family and I also have the powers of communication to be able to communicate mm -hmm. this to other people mm -hmm. so hopefully even when we grow to a hundred to a thousand and mm -hmm. I may not have the time I can um, inspire those um, at the management level just below me mm -hmm. to have that same kind of concern mm -hmm. for people that I did when we were a smaller group and even other companies mm -hmm. and even people like you who are visiting, mm -hmm. right? To understand that um, the people who work here, the young people who are trying to make ends meet, who are frustrated by the government system, etc., are not just names and faces and are not just, you know, individuals in the ecosystem, but they are actually people that yeah. you have to look out for yeah. in various ways. And everybody ways. has a dream for their life. Exactly. Everybody, you know, is is you know we're all under the same sun and that's that kind of that notion of you know how can you be be of service exactly. now you talk about i know you have a very strong faith mm -hmm. um and that uh plays into the name of your company can you tell us about one of your companies <laughs> i keep joking with you <laughs> it seems to be another one every day well, i, I learned about the yams <laughs> just what yesterday <laughs> And, um, well, yes, there are a couple of business <laughs> endeavors. The primary one is Hezzy's Couture, which is a fashion business. Mm -hmm. So we look at... Is um, this a, an original? This is a Hezzy's yeah. original, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, we look at clothes that fulfill um, a purpose, both in terms of function and style mm -hmm. and originality. Mm -hmm. So I take quite, um, I take a very active part in the design and also in quality assurance and checking the clothes that the tailors, my tailors are migrant tailors from Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. So that is also yet another opportunity for me to learn about their lives and their lifestyles and make sure that their families back mm -hmm. home are okay, etc. Um, so I take a, a very keen interest in that. But sorry, back to your question about the name Hevzi. So Hevzi is from Hevziba, which is in Isaiah 62. And in Isaiah 62, God talks about restoring Israel to himself because they had strayed, etc. And had come across a whole lot of affliction, but he talks about restoring them. And then the new name he gives Israel at that point of restoration is Hevziba, which means mm -hmm. my delight is in her. Mm -hmm. And for me, every vision that I have is something that either directly I felt I got from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, even the names of my companies, or um, when I had an idea about how to solve a problem, because this is about solving problems, creating mm -hmm. solutions yeah. to problems yeah. that I find around me every day. Um, when I had an idea about how to solve a problem, I take it up in prayer, mm -hmm. and then God says, okay, go ahead, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So all my names go back to that, to that theme of um, my delight is in her, because I feel like by spreading my, my um, sp spreading out my hands, you know, to do this work, to engage mm -hmm. in various business pursuits, that is a way of creating surplus or excess income mm -hmm. that can be used to better the lives mm -hmm. of other mm -hmm. people. So my dream, when we scale to a level of operation where the surplus every month is, uh, is substantial, my dream is to set up an orphanage mm -hmm. because I feel like that is one section of society that really people should be looking out for. Um, so all my names come from that because I feel like every time that I'm engaging in these pursuits, I'm creating revenue streams for people and that pleases God and mm -hmm. he delights in me at that point. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so that is the origin of the name. And actually, you talk about all these business pursuits, but it's like <laughs> we're only, you know, a percentage of the way there, but I can see the whole dream mapped out in front of yeah. me. And it's, it's the Zion group of companies because, uh -huh. you know, because when God talks about Zion, Zion is, is the city, is the shining city of example, mm -hmm. is, is the place where there is prosperity, is the place where God's eye watches over mm -hmm. and he makes sure that, you know, the impact is felt. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you, um, you know, you have a, a long term plan mm -hmm. and I keep joking with you about all your businesses, but I think that goes to this notion of, well, I, you know, want to get to um, our, our viewers that it's work. You know, true. you pray, you have faith, yeah. people have different faiths, yeah. different ways, but at the end of the day, or the beginning of the day, mm -hmm. 
you're you're making it happen. You're working. I think you said some. You get up really early in the I morning. Yeah, I usually wake up by four. By four. Yeah, because I mean, running a business here, one of the big things is HR staffing, mm -hmm. and so you have to do a lot of training. You have to do a lot of and training is not necessarily formal training but mm -hmm. like this morning about two hours i spent going through accounts and correcting even the way that they keep accounts because mm -hmm. i'm also a lawyer mm -hmm. i'm not always here yeah you know, looking yeah. over the tailors and so on so you know training one-on-one uh, -on -one, sitting with someone mm -hmm. for an hour and explaining things as patiently as possible and saying okay repeat it after me or do it again okay do it mm -hmm. and bring it and let me see mm -hmm. etc so i have to wake up really early because by seven my staff start arriving and then my day is no longer mine yeah so i wake up at four and you know just spend some time with god spend some time strategizing mm -hmm. whether it's looking at my financial statements or you know looking at the next plan um, or assigning tasks. So sometimes my um, my assistant gets messages from me at about 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I don't expect her to attend to them immediately, but it's like, okay, this is what you need to do for yeah. today. Now you're you, you living here in Ghana, you ha you talked about your hands are on it, your, your hands, and from that is coming the business. Right. But you also, you're very international. Mm -hmm. You travel. Um, how does your international um, outlook impact your business? Because I think, I mean, I, I have thoughts on it, but you have, I have seen directly um, your ability to bring your culture, mm -hmm. which at this point, you know, is clearly African, you know, you went to school in the U.S., you went to school in London. I mean, you're bringing this intersection of um, cultures out, right? So how does that play into your goals? Yeah. And I think it's interesting because it's, it's a great opportunity for me because then I have, I have, I see it as an opportunity because every day I get to live out an intersection of cultures. I get to live out an application of what I learned in the U.S. and mm -hmm. England here. And vice versa. Not everybody gets to do it both ways. Yes, Some people exactly. just go there for school, yeah. you get a degree, you work with it. Some people, you know, take stuff from here to sell in the US. But I get to do a cross pollination, which I think is fantastic. And it pushes me. It inspires mm -hmm. me so much. For example, every time I talk to you, I'm so inspired because you give me a certain sense of corporate culture and, and ethics and principles and how to run things professionally that I feel like it pushes me. Mm -hmm. It really <laughs> pushes me to strive for excellence in what I do. So for example, from here to the US, one of the things I take, you're right, is very much our culture. But I also look out for opportunities where um, things are being done in the US that a bit of incorporation of, um, you know, let's take for example, the fashion business, right? You have everyday things, you have backpacks, you have shoes, you have bags, etc. And I'm like, you know, I'm looking at this Louis Vuitton bag and I'm like, wouldn't this be amazing if it had like the, the silk lining inside was made of African print fabric. Mm -hmm. And I, I start thinking, okay, so how can we get African print fabrics in different textures mm -hmm. so that they fall easily and you can use them for things like curtains that you can't use mm -hmm. the stiff wax mm -hmm. prints for. So there's so many, so every time like I'm always having ideas. Yes, Let's just put it that it, way, yeah. you know, <laughs> because then I have that rich, I have that rich um, experience of something different, mm -hmm. and I still have that rich experience of functionality. Mm -hmm. Because I always say this: like one thing that happens in the UK and the US that doesn't quite always happen here is that things work. So every time I come back home, I'm like, how do you make things work? Because this is your home. And yes. It has to succeed. Yeah, yeah. It, there's nothing like, oh, I'm going to live here for, you know, six months in the year. And when I get tired of it, I'm going to move to the U.S. and enjoy, you know, like a bank and a post office <laughs> and everything that works the way you plan. No, no. I, have, I, I go there so I can see how things work, figure it out, learn from that and try and come and replicate it mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, that is the greatest opportunity, being able to marry the two experiences. Mm -hmm. So long term, you, you touched uh, a little bit uh, about the vision of Zion. Right. So Zion Companies, I, I will say Zion Holding, because that really sounds like a big <laughs> multinational <good>. conglomerate, <laughs> right? Um, what, uh, you talked about having an orphanage. Are there other things that you would like to aspire to? That's businesses? right, yeah. And um, I do various things. Mm -hmm. Hevzi's Couture, we have Hevzi's Gifts, which is like a luxury gift shop. So mm -hmm. we do fresh flowers, um, you know, event souvenirs and so on. And all these are things that I love to do myself. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. to do flower arrangements mm -hmm. because I love to do it. Because you love to do it. Wow. Exactly, yeah. And so Hevzi's Couture, Hevzi's Gifts. I do have um, a short-lit rental company. Mm -hmm. 
so that's like Zion Realty. Mm-hmm. One day, God <laughs> willing, I'll build, I'll build a, an estate company. I mean, I can see it happening yeah, as to how I'll yeah, get there from yeah. now. You know, it's in the hands of God. Um, and of course, due to hard work. So I do short lists as well. And um, for that, I get to I get to meet, you know, wonderful you people, kinds of people from, you know, UK, US, Australia, wherever, mm-hmm. who in Ghana. And I also get to share a bit of the vision. Yes. For me, this is about understanding the vision, understanding my country, understanding that we may be handicapped in some ways, but we've got so much to offer and communicating that to people. So um, that is one way in which it's a business, but it's mm-hmm. such an opportunity for me to interact it's with people. It's an extension of your heart as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. Extended my heart. Thank yeah. you. Extended <laughs> my heart. That is what I look to do through all this. So there's a short lead company. And then... Um, I think that's 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 the basic. That's okay. the, yeah, those are the basic things. And so, for me, when I see um, Zion Holdings, as you put it, I see it as a way to extend, a way to extend, you know, my heart, mm-hmm. a way to extend the vision, mm-hmm. and a way to impact the lives of people, both people I meet, clients, as mm-hmm. well as my workers. Well, I think um, deep down, if anybody, if people, if you're allowed to have some extension of your heart mm-hmm. which is your soul or that which you know can inspire someone else people i use the word creativity mm-hmm. art music whatever but it, it doesn't have to be in that kind of arts form it could simply be being kind right? right you that's know true. being humane mm-hmm. and extending that to others i think that is you know part of everybody's hopefully mm-hmm. it's not part of everybody's journey and that's actually why i'm doing revolutionary daydreams to let people know this now could you i want to leave with some lessons Mm. right Mm. you i like to ask what would you have told yourself like Mm. you know i want to say young ruth but you're so young (laughs) still you know are there lessons that you continually work on or are there if you had to tell some folks you know make sure you do x y and z for people who are really i guess aspiring to be entrepreneurs like yourself Um, that's great. And I'll say, okay, the first one is make sure that you know the vision and mm-hmm. whatever your source of strength and encouragement or vision is, stay connected to it. Mm-hmm. That is one thing that has always helped me. You know, like, like you said, my, my vision is extending what is on my heart through, mm-hmm. these, through these things that I do. So I've always stuck to that vision and the source of my vision is God. So I will stay connected to him. There is no business idea that I try to execute without praying, never. And mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I have dreams and I see how it turn out. So it gives me so much confidence. <laughs> like I see a property that I want to rent, um, to do up to sublet, and I have like zero funds, but you know, just because in prayer I have some inspiration and assurance, I go in with full confidence. And like you look you look back a year later, you're like, wow, mm-hmm. how did that happen? Mm-hmm. You know? So you gotta stay well, you connected. You have the intent. Exactly, yes. Intent. So you That's gotta that stay, vision. You gotta yeah. stay connected to that, to, mm-hmm. to whatever the source of that intent is, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Whether it's like, you know, you reading magazines and being inspired by famous people, whether it's by religion, whether it's by, you know, just a desire to to, to do something, mm-hmm. stay connected to the source of that intent. The second thing I'll say is now in Africa there is a lot of pressure to have a profession. I have one. Mm -hmm. I am a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But still, I get all the comments. Hey, you went to Yale and you're a seamstress. I'm like, "Mm." (laughs) you know, and and, and you have to have a very tough skin Mm -hmm. to deal with that, Mm -hmm. right? You have to have a tough skin. But even besides the tough skin, you also have to have an understanding of where those comments are coming from. Mm -hmm. These comments came from people who loved me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I said, why are you trying to, like, clamp on my creativity? Why wouldn't you allow me to explore what I need to explore? But the me now, five years down the line, I realized that they said all those things because no matter how successful you are, no matter how far you go, comments and, uh, you know, um, interpretations of who you are Mm -hmm. would always pull you back. You always have to stop and explain. So if you're on a professional track, it's worth it getting that qualification. You can put it away. When you're ready, you take it out, dust it, and Mm -hmm. use it if you need to, or pursue whatever you have to do. But basically, always getting hung up on the fact that, oh, you know, so when are you going to start practicing? Or when are you going to do this? Like, know for sure. Have your answer ready that I'm okay. I'm a qualified lawyer, but I'm okay doing this for the next two to five years. So I'm okay doing this till I'm ready to switch. Well, I guess I would translate that as take your ego out of it and follow your heart. Exactly. Right? (laughs) <laughs> Follow your heart, but 
take wise counsel into consideration exactly. because there is an expert this is this is the older me quote unquote this is the older me speaking there is an expiration date to mm. when you can when you can pursue certain career paths mm -hmm. like let's say if you're in a medical career exactly path, you know your qualifications etc will expire at some point so yeah. it's worth it just do it if you feel like you will use it just do it mm -hmm. and then put it aside if you know that you will never use it, then tell all of them, I'm sorry, but I can't <laughs> help you and get on with your life. But if you think like there's the slimmest chance that whatever profession it is that, um, you know, your parents or whoever it is um, are advocating, if there's the slimmest chance that you will use it, just do it and then put it aside. Because, you know, every month, every other month, having to sit down for half an hour and have the same argument, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. But I feel like there are better things to do, <laughs> you know? And I could have avoided all those arguments if I just listened and, mm. you know, done what I needed to do earlier mm -hmm. rather than later, mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, and I, what, what I'm hearing in that also is this notion of having a, uh, you know, having a plan, mm -hmm being focused but also psychologically preparing yourself exactly. for the battle exactly. and i think people particularly people creatively and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. don't put the psychological um f time in it that's right you do get your qualifications that's right. you stay up all late that's get right. up early you make da 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 but you don't kind of maybe get the clarity of the mind it wearies you it wear exactly so you have to you have you're very right you have to have that clarity of mind and purpose and vision mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it were and i'll say that another way to say what i'm trying to say is pick your battles <laughs> if you know you're going to do this thing anyway yeah like, don't let it become a sticking point just yeah. settle the what you can yeah. settle so you can because yeah. it's hard work being an entrepreneur it's such hard work yes. so settle what you need to settle so you don't get called into meetings like african parents like to call their p children into meetings at like 5 a.m <laughs> when they have something serious to discuss with you. Really? Yeah, like, <laughs> eliminate all that. Yes, 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 yes. Just yes. do what you're going to do anyway. There's no point. You're right, take your So what's out. interesting, too, I'm yeah. hearing, because this does not happen in yeah. the United oh, States, no. yeah. you... I, we we don't get called into 5 a.m. meetings, <laughs> but you take the 5 a.m. meeting yeah. with your yeah, parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so, so uh, pick your battles. Pick your battles. Pick your battles. The ones you know you're going to concede to anyway, mm. figure that out early and concede to them early so you can have more energy and more time and more support mm. to pursue the things that matter. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great um, uh, uh, message to end on. And I want to say... Um, I'm excited to mm -hmm. follow your journey, both personally, but also um, your corporate, you know, looking at how your business are growing. I've already seen, you know, you um, pivot, you know, innovate, mm -hmm. and I think that's wonderful. So I hope that, you know, some folks out there will find some type of inspiration in, in your story. Now, where can we find you online? Our website is www.hevzis.com. It's Hevzis? Yes, H-E-P-H-Z-I-S. Okay. I'm yet to set up the website for Zion Holdings, but I'll keep you posted. But that's part of the plan. Is, and yes. so we'll make sure we have this in the um, comments section so Great, people can find it. So that's it. for the couture and so on. And if I could just add one more word, you know, when it comes to, like, inspiration, you know, um, this goes back to where I take my inspiration from, which mm -hmm. is God and religion and so on. And um, there is a Bible verse, and it goes. It says that earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of sons of God, right? Mm -hmm. Earnest expectation of creation, that is the world, awaits the manifestation of the children of God, you could say. And for me, what is creation? What is, you know, my environment? My environment is an environment where people, as you discovered this week, people, you can have people who earn 17 seats a day. Mm -hmm which is the equivalent of about four dollars yeah. which does nothing mm -hmm. for anyone but that is his reality yeah. and so he is waiting for someone to come to him with a better opportunity he is waiting for someone to make education available as it should be mm -hmm. he is waiting for someone to make affordable housing a reality he is waiting for someone to give him the training he needs or to give him the pro bono legal help he needs mm -hmm. to be able to get a better wage right so all around me every day the people begging in the street the street hawkers they are not losers but mm -hmm. they are people who are yeah. waiting for me yeah, yeah. so every time I see suffering or I see difficulty or I see um, obstructions to people pursuing their destiny it is not about them failing it is not even about the government it is about the government but 
that is insignificant compared to what I can do, mm -hmm. which is me getting up, picking up the mantle yeah. of whatever I've been tasked to do, whatever vision I've been, I've been given, and executing that, right? So that all these people waiting can finally say, she is the answer mm -hmm. to our prayer, mm -hmm. or she is the answer to our need, or she has helped me to find my path mm -hmm. in life. And another verse that I hold on to tightly says that, you know, God will bless the work of your hands, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not working, there is nothing for him to do. <laughs> and unfortunately in Africa, we have people who spend a lot of time in church, but they don't put um, similar effort into working. Mm -hmm. That is terrible. I'll denounce that at every opportunity I get. And mm -hmm. I'll say to everyone, I pray a lot. I spend a lot of time in church. But the fact of the matter is, there is nothing for him to bless your, if you're not working. Your hands if are not are idle. idle. <laughs> exactly. So no one's hands should ever be idle. Never, ever. Yeah. Never. If you come to me and you ask me for money, I most likely won't give you money. I might give you food because I don't want you to go to bed mm -hmm. hungry. But more often than not, I will offer you a job mm -hmm. because you have to be working. For, for your prayers to be answered. Yeah, that yeah. is the conduit for God to answer yeah, your prayer. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, those are just two additional thoughts. No, th those are lovely um, words and I think a, a further insight into you. Uh, also, for me, this week, having seen, like I said before, I've been here several times and I've seen the disparities, but to go a little deeper and understand and to hear you talk about how you can have an impact, how you can move someone else forward, right? Because someone does it for you. Exactly. exactly your parents. Exactly. Your education. Exactly. You know, yeah, and how are you exactly, exactly how yeah, are you gonna do yeah, it yeah, for and, yeah. and at the level that you can. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully one of the takeaways is that wherever you are, whoever you are, there is something. I always say to my staff, they don't earn I mean, I pay them better than they would elsewhere, mm -hmm. but it's still it's still not much mm -hmm. compared to what you know people in the US would earn but I would say to them that wherever you are you are a step above someone else mm -hmm. wherever you are is an answer to a prayer or a wish on your heart mm -hmm. for a certain kind of position and a certain kind of salary so no matter how bad you think your circumstances there is someone that you can pull up pull to where up. you are exactly. and as you're pulling someone up someone else above you is also going to pull you up yeah so yeah. Um, that that is that is the the the, the the mission or the the the, um, the ethic that I'm trying to mm -hmm, inculcate mm -hmm. in everyone, so that it, it we create an ecosystem of people reaching out to help other people, yeah. reaching out to pull people up. And I think with that, that that is more of a a, a, a bottom up approach. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're dealing with that. One day we're going to do the top down approach, yeah. and we're going to try and influence people in government to do the right mm -hmm. thing. But when we get there, we'll have another interview. Yes, yes, we'll have another <laughs> interview. Okay. On that note, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Ruth, I thank you so much <laughs> thank you, for joining me today and um, I will definitely uh, follow your career and uh, look forward to talking to you when you um, get to that next level. Thank you know you. what it is. That's a personal joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>